Hey everyone, my name is Darcy and I'm a professional actress based in North London. Today I'm going to talk to you about my top tips for communicating with your audience. I trained at Fourth Monkey Actor Training Company for two years and the big thing that we always carried around with us was to be bold and to play. And I hope that I can share that message with you and you can take that with you when working on communicating with your audience. I've worked on stage and on screen and the principles are always the same. And over time, if you use these things, they should help you to feel more and more confident about presenting to an audience. They've definitely made me a better actress and I also think probably a better person too. I hope you enjoy them. So my step one is to relax, which sounds like a massive cliche, but it's not because relaxing, the more relaxed you are, the more relaxed your audience is going to be and the more receptive they will be to your ideas. So you may have your own ways to relax um, in your daily life. And I definitely think you should incorporate them into relaxing before you do your pitch, but I'll give you some of my ideas as well. So my favorite one is to do a body scan. And basically it is what it says on the tin. If you take a nice wide stance, um, hip width apart and you just want to roll your shoulders back and breathe which sounds crazy because obviously we all breathe but actually we don't consciously do it a lot of the time. A good way to do this is just to close your eyes and to focus on trying to imagine all of the energy that's running under your body. So if we start in your feet I just want you to really feel your feet on the ground. Really feel the pinky toe all the way to the big toe how they connect with the earth. Move up to your knees, take a nice gentle bend. You can bounce a little bit as well. It might make you feel a bit silly, but that's kind of also the point. You wanna then move up to your thighs, your hips, and just notice any tension, any parts of the body that feel a bit tight or a bit tense, or just feel like maybe they could do with some loosening up. And you can do anything to do that. So if it's in your hips, take a couple of sways. Don't worry about what you look like. It's not part of it. And then move up to your belly, placing your hands there, give it a little rub, kind of like you're hungry. Make sure that everything's nice and relaxed. Take your shoulders back, roll them backwards, wiggle your fingers, bend at your elbows, nod your head up and down, side to side, and just close your eyes again. And just become hyper aware of how you feel in this moment, whether that's nervous or excited, or bored, or tired, or agitated, any of those things really, it's all completely fine. It's not about trying to change it, it's just about noticing it, and noticing how your body feels. Are you hot? Are you cold? Are you irritated? Are you relaxed? And just take a few really deep breaths. Don't be afraid of feeling your tummy move. Don't be afraid of really just giving yourself some time and some space. And then what I want you to do, which sounds completely contradictory, but it's really going to help, is I want you to tense every single muscle in your body. You're going to feel really tight, squidge up your face as tight as you can, and then release. And that should give you a complete wave of relaxation because every single muscle was working and now isn't. So try that one more time. Squeeze as hard as you can, and release. And if you don't want to look too silly if you're in front of other people, you can also just do this with your shoulders. So, squeezing them up to your thing, it'll make your voice sound really funny as well. And relax. And lift them up again. And relax. And before you do anything else, just take a moment to really feel that sense of peace and calm from head to toe. So the next thing we're gonna do, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have clean hands. So if you don't, make sure you just wash them beforehand because we're gonna give ourselves a really nice little facial massage, which is as nice as it sounds. Talk about being at the spa. So you wanna warm your hands up just by rubbing them together really quickly. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the hard bit here, just above your wrist on either side, and you're gonna drag down from the kind of center of your ear where you can feel that cheekbone here and here all the way towards the bottom of your mouth. So it goes like this. I'll turn sideways. So you wanna just drag, I obviously can't speak like this. Oh, you wanna do that a couple of times. So you're just bringing the heat of your hand all the way down. <laughs> and what that's gonna do is that's gonna really release any tension that we're holding in our jaw, which is really commonplace to hold stress actually. So do that a few times. 
And I really enjoy that loose feeling that you have in the jaw at the end. This next tip may sound really simple, and it is actually, but it's one of my favorite things to help me feel more comfortable in a space that I'm gonna be working in. So the most important thing to do when you go into any new space is to feel comfortable with it. And if this is somewhere you've never been before, that can actually be quite difficult because you have no idea what it's gonna look like or feel like or any of those things. So take your time when you first go into this space that you're working with. If you aren't in the space you're working with beforehand, try to just visualize it because that can also be really helpful. Take a look around the room. So the top left corners, the top right corners, the back, the floor, Really take a moment to understand the space you're in. If you can, you can also get physical with the walls or even the ground, uh, sit down, stand up, jump about, anything that you can do in that space to make you feel more comfortable and a little bit silly will really, really help. But if you're limited in that department, this should get all of those feelings without having to do any of those things. So we're gonna be working with our breath. So to do that, you wanna make sure that you're getting a nice bounce in the knees, a nice wide stance and put a hand on the stomach to make sure you're really engaging with your breath. Take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, really feel that relaxation. Now I want you to imagine anything you like, a color, um, an object, a shape, anything that works with you visually. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna use our breath to fill the space with that thing. So if it's a color, you can just imagine painting the walls with it, or it being like an orb of light around you that moves. It could be hundreds and thousands of tiny feathers, whatever you like that works with you. I personally like using colors, um, but that's completely your choice. So close your eyes. Imagine the thing that you're gonna be using your breath to fill the space with, and really let it surround your body. So if it's feathers, imagine them all around you, floating in the air. If it's a color, just kind of imagine that it's surrounding you and really feel that warmth of it. It's important that it feels nice and feels good. When you've taken your time to imagine it, I want you to open your eyes, really see and take in your space again. And now with every breath, that color or that thing is gonna reach every corner of the room. So you wanna be hitting all the corners. If there's any objects, you're gonna be going round the objects, under the objects, filling absolutely every gap. So it's completely up to you if you do this with eyes open or eyes closed, whatever helps you see it better. So if I'm imagining my orange color that's gonna fill the space, I'm gonna breathe in. And as I exhale, I feel it growing and expanding from me all, the, all around me, so that's 360. And with every breath, it grows further and further and further, filling every corner of the room. And then when you feel like all you can see is your object or your color, you've really taken ownership of every single part of the space. This exercise is a really, really good way to make you feel like whatever space that you find yourself in, you are really filling it with your voice, with your body, with your breath, and just with who you are really. And it doesn't mean that you have to be the tallest person in the world or the loudest person in the world. You just need to feel like you are comfortable in the space that you're working in. One way to feel really present and in the moment is to connect to our breath. We want to make sure that what we're speaking and talking about is really truthful. And it's a key part of what I trained with as an actor. Your truth is centered in literally the center of your body, right where your gut is. I guess that's where the phrase gut instinct comes from. So we want to make sure that we're feeling really connected to that part of ourselves so that when we speak truthfully, the audience receives it as such as well. A really good way to do this is to get into semi-supine. So in semi-supine, you're laying on your back with your feet like so and your knees up in the air. Try and be nice and relaxed and put your hands on your belly. From here, just take a couple of breaths. Really take your time. It's a nice opportunity to really work on relaxing as well. What we now wanna do is we wanna mark the point between the inhale and the exhale. When you're normally breathing, it feels like a little pause, but we wanna make it really clear where that space is. And you're gonna mark it with a little ha sound. It's gonna be short and sharp. It may even make you laugh and that's totally fine as well. So you're gonna breathe in. Ha. And it's just a little marker. Do it again. Ha. And you're gonna do it twice, very quickly. Ha ha. 
And you should, while you're doing this, feel your stomach move as you release it. Once you've done this a few times, we're gonna move on to some sounds. So you can start with like a little F or an S sound. And as you release the breath, that F or S sound you're gonna imagine is moving a tiny feather from your lips all the way to the ceiling in a really consistent way. An example would be this. With that breath, you're imagining the feather reaching all the way to the ceiling. And as you inhale, it just floats back down and rests on your lips again. Once you've done this with F and S sounds, you can move on to Vs and Zs. So, like so. You want to do this so it feels like a consistent sound. It won't feel like that straight away, but this is the whole process of the warm up. So you don't want it to be like, you want it to feel really consistent and at the same time. And by keeping your hands on your abdomen, you're really going to feel it moving in time with your breath. And that's something we want to keep really in touch with because that's what's going to be supporting you while you speak. So my next big tip is that you really want to make sure whatever you're doing is you want to be telling a story. So I don't mean it in the sense that you need to make up a story around what you're saying. I mean that it needs to feel like a storytelling experience to your audience. Now, this may sound complicated, but actually it's really simple. And there are a few things you can do to really help the listener engage with what you're saying. Now, it can be quite easy to fall into monotone kind of styles of speech, and we don't want to do that because if you're speaking at the same tone the entire time, people are going to really quickly not be listening to what you're saying, as you might have done just there. So the really important thing is you want to fluctuate in what you're doing, and it's a really quick fix. So either imagine a little puppy or a little kitten uh, really cutely at the door trying to come in after they've been outside. You can even do a little paw if you like. And like a little puppy would make, I want you to make these sorts of sounds. As high as you can in your range with a closed mouth, just helping to warm up that top end of your voice. So again, it just sounds like this. This is really engaging and also relaxing the back of your throat. After you've done this, you're going to take a small F or a small um, S sound. And just to warm up the voice, I want you to take a few breaths and release using those sounds. So it will sound like this. Or. Do that a few times. Um, make sure you're engaging with your breath. Put your hand on your belly to help. And remember to keep your spine nice and long. When your breath feels a little bit more warm, you're going to move on to either a V sound or a Z sound, so a V or a Z. And what you're going to do is you're going to imagine a tiny little B. And this B is going to carry around the sound. So whether that's a V or a Z, this B is going to help move around the space. And as the B moves, your voice is going to move with it. So if I've got my little buzzing B here, it's going to go like this. And I want you to imagine it's kind of on a roller coaster or flying around the space. It's actually really helpful if you do have access to a space, is to help the bee discover the space with you. And as it moves, your tone and pitch changes as well. And I really want you to make sure you're going as low as you can, so to as high as you can. And what this does, without us even realizing, is it really engages our entire pitch range that we have in our voice. Because if we keep changing and fluctuating between the higher and the lower ends, your audience is automatically going to be more engaged in what you're saying. We also want to make sure that our lips are engaged because they're really important in the process as well. A really quick way to do this, similar to what we did earlier, is we've relaxed them, but now we want to get them engaged. So you're going to blow kisses to either people or things you see in the room. Uh, if there's not anyone there, you can use chairs or objects, but really make sure you direct this action to something. Um, and you're just going to blow kisses. And don't um, allow your neck to bulge out in front of you, so you don't want to be going like this, because that's going to constrict your throat. So make sure it's just your mouth doing the work. And this is going to help with that forward motion of our lips. And to counteract that, I then want you to smile as big as you possibly can. And you're going to fill the room with that smile. 
and that should really get your cheeks working. Again, this is going to feel quite sore, so in order to relax them, puff them out, and you're going to hit them with your fingers. All the stuff basically that you were told not to do in school when you were a, when you were a kid, you're going to do now. And you can give another massage as well there. Once all of those articulation muscles are really warmed up, a nice way to test if you've done your work is to do some tongue twisters. Uh, I'm sure you know loads, but to give you a couple of my favorites, whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not, whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, we'll weather the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. And obviously the faster you can go, you can start to test yourself. So whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not, whether the weather be cold or whether the weather be hot, or whether the weather, whatever the weather, whether we like it or not. And that's quite a fun way to challenge yourself when you're at home, seeing how quickly you can go. You can also do fun things with your face and see if you can make different shapes with the different parts of the muscle. So if you can lift one side of your mouth up and then the other, and then down here and down there. And the more that you practice these things, the more you're gonna really isolate those muscles in your mouth. Something that's really key to telling a story and to getting a point across clearly is to make sure you're highlighting the bits of what you're saying uh, to the audience because you're not going to highlight everything, otherwise they'd switch off. So we want to make sure we're really pointing to those things that matter the most. A great way to do this is to print out a copy of the things you're going to be saying, whether that's pitch or a speech or anything really. And I want you to get a pen and I want you to mark with your pen the ends of sentences or commas or question marks or exclamation points, any grammar really. And you can just do a line from top to bottom like that to really separate out those sections. Within each of these sections, grab a highlighter and I want you to highlight the first and the last word. Also highlight anything in there that's really important. So an example of this would be if I'm talking about the tongue twister we used earlier, whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not, the really important words there are fine and not and weather. So what we're going to do once we've highlighted those important words is we're going to really stress them. So whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not. So that sounds really exaggerated. And I want you to go a step further. I want you to physicalize it. So that doesn't have to make any sense, but just do something with your body while you're talking through it. So whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not. Can seem a bit ridiculous, but don't worry about it. The bigger you are, the better. Do this a few times with it seeming really exaggerated. And I promise you afterwards, that will naturally sink into what you're doing. So that when you say that phrase, whether the weather be fine or whether the weather be not, it becomes clear, but also quite subtle at the same time. Do this with the entire thing that you're saying and really highlight the points that you want to get across. A good way to test if it's clear is to talk this through to someone and to ask them what they think the main key takeaways were from what you said. And hopefully this should give you an idea on the things that you are naturally or unconsciously pointing towards. My last tip is all about connecting with your audience. And we've done a load of things so far that are really gonna help you anyway. But this last one, personally for me, made a massive difference in feeling comfortable in almost any situation. Uh, one of my first big jobs after leaving drama school was at the Greenwich Theatre, uh, which is a 450 seat space. It can be really daunting if you've never performed somewhere like that before, and I personally hadn't. So this was a really big way for me to feel comfortable and like I belonged somewhere that just felt quite daunting to begin with. My director helped me by telling me a little technique to use that made me familiar with everyone in the room before they'd even sat down. And if you have the opportunity to be in that space before anyone's in there, this is a really, really great way to engage. If you don't and they're sat down when you come in, just take a moment to do this in your head um, and it should really help as well. So if you are lucky enough to have a space in front of you with no one sat down, but you have the chairs in the room, I want you to look at every single chair and introduce yourself. It sounds silly, but it really works. And you can do this in any way that you like, whether that's a formal greeting, like, hello, nice to meet you, or whether that's just like a hi, or a, how are you doing, whatever works for you. And change it for every single seat. So it'll go like this. Hello, hi, you okay? I'm good, what's going on? Enjoy the show. Yes, hello, nice to see you again. How are you doing today? All the way through. This obviously took me a bit of time with 450 seats, but hopefully it shouldn't be too much for you guys. If it is a really big space, you can do it row by row. 
This really helps to make you feel like you belong there already. And also one of the most important things and one of the most important principles of speaking to a group is it makes you connect with people individually. It can be really easy when you're speaking to a large room to just direct it generally out into the large population. But I promise you that's not gonna have the same effect as making sure that you lock eyes and talk to people one person at a time. Don't worry, no one's gonna feel left out, but what it is gonna do, it's gonna make sure people feel like you're really speaking to them, which I promise will make all of the difference. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I really hope these tips were helpful to you guys. The last thing I would say is if you've ever watched anything like a TED talk or a speech that you've been really inspired by, I promise you it did not happen overnight. These tips may seem really short and really small, but if you do them consistently, over time they're gonna build up and hopefully help you feel really confident when communicating with people. So yeah, I hope you take these with you and good luck with anything that comes your way in the future.